The book of the month for January is Genesis, and we're going to be doing a quick summary of the first 10 chapters. So if you don't already know the story, in the first few chapters of Genesis, we learn about the creation um, of the world. God created the world in six days, and he rested on the seventh day. Um, one of the things, which was the last thing that God created, was mankind. Adam actually means um, mankind. And God created Eve out of Adam, and they started the world. God gave them the world to dominate, to take over, to have dominion, and to care up, um, all the other creatures that God created. God gave them um, a choice. There was a tree of knowledge and evil and God gave them the choice um, to not eat of the fruit but they did they were um, tempted by the serpent they ate of the fruit and wickedness came into the world and we see things like Cain killing Abel and we had the first polygamy which was Lamech having two wives God became very upset with what was happening in the world and he decided to wipe the earth so he spoke to Noah told him to gather his family get people on the ark that he built and he wiped the world with a flood which he promised not to do again but Noah and his family survived and this was how um, the world was able to continue. I will be taking us through an expose of the book Genesis and I'm taking us from chapters 11 to chapters 20. So like we talked about last week Genesis chapters 1 to 11 cover the downward spiral of mankind due to a series of poor choices. And today I'm going to be going over what happens linking the first half of Genesis and the second half of Genesis. So in chapter 11, the Babylonians try to outsmart God out of boredom by building the Tower of Babel. But God is like, <laughs> yeah, right. And he turned their language into Babel. So essentially he scattered them a lot around uh, and he messed up their languages chapter 12 abram and sarah elope with lot as their third wheel uh, and in this chapter sarah's wife sister scandal um also happens this is where abraham is like oh she's not my she's not my wife she's my sister and that brought on plagues on the king um, but god delivered them despite their errors chapter 13 abraham and lot are now rich and loaded but they had to split due to shepherds quarreling and that left Adam with Canaan, and Lot chose the more glamorous looking place. Again, the third wheel was cut off. Chapter 14, Lot played himself and got captured in Sodom and Gomorrah, and he had to handle that, but God delivered him despite his errors. Chapter 15, God's covenant with Abraham and his kingdom of stars um, was brought about. God reaffirmed his blessings in Abraham's lives, and that's when he told him about his descendants. Chapter 16 was the Sarai Hagar scandal. Um, but here, God reveals himself as Elroy, the one who saw a guy. Chapter 17, there was a name change for both Abraham and Sarai, and generational covenants were established. Isaac was promised, which means laughter. Chapter 18, there were angelic visitors, hospitality, and scornful laughters. Uh, Sodom intercession also happens in this chapter. God indulges Adam's bargaining because nothing's too hard for him. Chapter 19, angelic warnings, shambolic Sodom, destruction of brimstone and fire. Um, this is where we hear about the pillar of salt. And chapter 20 was the sequel to Sarah's wife sister scandal because this happened again for some odd reason. And it brought down barrenness to the king. God delivered them despite their poor choices. So I hope that through these titles, you can see that Genesis has a lot of stories, but we have to focus on the big picture. How God keeps restoring his people, how God keeps forgiving humankind. On chapter 21, we found um, uh, God answered Sarah. She had a son. She called his name Isaac. And it's because she, she said, God has made me to laugh. And make people around me to also laugh with me. And Haggai and her son were sent away because uh, the son mocked Sarah. They were sent away. But the angel of God appeared to them in the wilderness and saved them. Chapter 22, where God tempted Abraham, asked him to sacrifice 
his only son. That is the, the, the one God gave him, Isaac. Uh, and Abraham did not, uh, you know, he, he did not uh, reject, I mean, he did not refuse. He was about to obey. In fact, he was almost sacrificing when a ram was uh, given him in replacement for Isaac. After that, God swore by himself. The first time in the, in, in the history of man, God swore by himself that he will bless Abraham and multiply him. Psalm 23, Sarah died at 127 age, 27 years old. Abraham requested for a land to bury her in a foreign land. Psalm 24, um, Abraham made his oldest servant to swear not to allow his son to marry in a foreign land. The son, I mean, the servant obeyed and asked God to give him signs and uh, actions to guide him. Uh, he found Rebecca, daughter of Fenaho, Abraham's brother. Uh, Laban, Rebecca's uh, brother, allowed them to take away Rebecca and, of course, go with a maid servant. Summer 25, Abraham married again. Another wife had six, six other children, but left all his inheritance to Isaac. For the others, he gave them, give, I mean, gifts while he was still alive so that they can just go, so they can go away. Uh, the Lord blessed Rebecca, I mean, Rebecca, and she had two children. Uh, the, the senior, Esau, the Lord said, will serve the junior, Jacob. Eventually, towards the end of the, uh, of the, of the chapter, Esau sold his bad tribe for a pot of porridge. Chapter 20 says, There was famine in the land, and God told Isaac not to go anywhere while others are rushing to Egypt. Isaac sold in the land, and he, he, he reaped a hundred foes. He was great. He was great to the extent that he was envied, and there was already, I mean, there was fight with him. He had to dig wells. He had to do all, all, all of that. And the, uh, eventually, the king and the, and the people of the land had to make peace with him. Chapter 27, Isaac was, was old and requested that Esau should give him uh, a, good meal, a good meal of meat so that he can bless him. The mother overheard this and told Jacob to do the same. So Jacob had to, uh, you know, uh, dress as if he was uh, uh, Esau. And of course, he supplanted uh, Esau and got Esau's blessings. Uh, Isaac, blessed, Isaac blessed Jacob with a blessing meant for Esau. Esau ate Jacob fought with. The mother asked Jacob to run away to dwell with Laban, her brother. Chapter 28, Isaac instructed Jacob to go to a place to take wife from the daughters of Laban's, Laban, his uncle. He sought to for wife, daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son. Jacob had a dream at Bethel. He saw a ladder going from, you know, from heaven, I mean, from her to heaven, and he saw ages ascending and descending. Chapter 29, Jacob met Rachel uh, and Laban. Jacob offered to serve seven years for, um, for Rachel, but eventually he was given uh, the, the, the Leah, the senior sister. Eventually, he had to start under seven years again uh, for this. In chapter 30, that is the last verse, Richard, Richard envied Leah. Richard was, uh, was barren, so Leah was, you know, uh, giving birth while uh, Richard was not giving birth. At the end of it all, Jacob had to beg that he should be allowed to live with all his children, and, and he has to, you know, do some uh, kind of um, animal crossbreeding the first experiment of that in the world so that uh, he will be allowed to go. And uh, Laban ended up with, fe um, with uh, feeble cattle while he ended up with uh, strong cattle. Reviewing the chapters 31 to 40. And in chapter 31, we see the story of Jacob and Laban. Laban is Jacob's father-in-law and he's worked with him for over 20 years. In chapter 31, Jacob leaves Laban and Laban chases after him, but God warned him that he should not do him any harm. So when they met, they agreed they were going to set up a stone between them that 
Laban will not cross over to where Jacob is, and Jacob will also not cross over to where Laban is. And Laban called that place Jega Shaduta, while Jacob called it Galid and Mizpah. I encourage us to read this very interesting narrative. In chapter 32 and 33, Jacob prepares to meet his brother Esau. And because of the circumstances surrounding their separation, he was not sure the, uh, the way Esau was going to receive him. So he sent gifts ahead. And um, later in that chapter, he wrestled with an angel at Peniel, and his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. In verse 28, the Bible says, Then the man said, Your name will no more be called Jacob. Instead, it will be Israel, because you have wrestled with God and with people, and you have won. Thereafter, in chapter 33, he met Esau, and uh, he wasn't sure how Esau was going to react to him, but Esau embraced him and hugged him and did not accept all the gifts he presented, but he insisted then Esau accepted. Chapter 34 to 35, we saw the two sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi. They killed Hamor, his son Shechem, for sexually molesting their sister Dinah and all the male in Shechem. I want us to particularly read this story and see what happened and how they went about this act. They deceived the people. Let's see what, um, what actually the, tag, um, the tactic they used. Then Jacob returned to Bethel, built an altar called El Bethel. And God blessed him again. Rhea found the blessing for him. Later in that chapter, Rachel died. And um, when he was giving birth to Benjamin and Isaac also died. In chapters 36 to 37, 36 listed the family line of Esau. And in chapter 37, Joseph was introduced. We know all about Joseph, you know, the dreams he had, how he was sold into slavery. And in chapter 38, there's a spectacular story of Judah. Judah is also one of the sons of Jacob. And his uh, daughter-in-law, Tamar. Judah had three sons, two of them married Tamar and they died, and he kept the last son from marrying her, told her to go back to her father's house. Then Tamar disguised, somehow Judah slept with her and became the father to her twins, Perez and Zerah. Let's read this story, very interesting. In chapter 39, then we came back to Joseph. Chapter 39 and 40, Joseph in Potiphar's house, how he resisted the, the seduction of Potiphar's wife and how Potiphar's wife um, implicated him and he was in prison. While in prison, he interpreted the dreams of the butler and the baker. And he told the butler, Pharaoh is going to restore you in three days and told the baker, He's going, you're going to die in three days. But he told the big butler that when you get to palace, to the palace, please don't forget me because I'm here suffering for what I know nothing about. The last verse is an interesting verse in chapter 40. It says, but the chief wine taster, that's the butler, didn't remember Joseph. In fact, he forgot all about him. So let's read this and um, you will see... Genesis is a very interesting book, and it contains a lot of live nuggets that will help us increase, I mean, improve our Christian work. And um, my focus is Genesis chapter 41 to 50. I want to believe you have read the book of Genesis. It's a book that tells us a lot. It's a book filled with stories of faith. Um, it's a book that challenges our faith as well. It's a book that tells us of how God can change the life of a man. And that's what my focus is on this morning. Um, Joseph and his dysfunctional family. If you read from chapters 41 to 50, the Bible tells us primarily of the encounter of Joseph, how Joseph was sold into, I mean, we've been told, told about how Joseph went into slavery and how the, the king, Pharaoh, had a dream and none of the magicians in the land could interpret the dream. Joseph was invited 
he interpreted the, the dream to the king, making him to understand that, look, there's a famine that is coming upon the land. And on account of the fact that Joseph was able to interpret the dream, he rose to prominence at the age of 30 in the land. The king actually gave him um, someone, Asenath chose his wife for him and through her joseph became a father of manasseh and ephraim we go on the scripture tells us of the fact that his brothers had to go look for food in the land of egypt they journeyed from canaan to egypt to go look for food as soon as they, they came in he could recognize them they couldn't tell who he was. He was very harsh with them, made a lot of demands of their, on them and told them, okay, um, you know, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to keep one of you. But anyhow, they went back, they got the food, made sure his money, their monies were returned to them. And when they got home, they told their father, um, this is what happened. If we're to ever go back, our younger brother, Benjamin, has to go with us. The, the father was afraid and said, you know what happened to his brother? You know what happened to their mother? I don't want to go down into my grave with sadness. In any case, they had to go back eventually to go buy food. And what happened was that huh, Joseph, knowing what was going on, went quietly. He cried, he mourned because the dream he had came to fulfillment, that his brothers were going to bow before him. And indeed, they bowed. Um, just to cut the story short, because it's a lot of chapters, it's a lot of story, you know, uh, that's why I say you have to find time to read the book of Genesis. It has interesting and intriguing story. He eventually revealed his identity to them and also called, told them that they should go bring his father. When they came, when the whole family relocated from the land of Canaan to the land of Egypt, he made sure they were given a choice place to dwell in the land of Goshen because they were cattle rearers and I mean the 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 tradition in the land is that the Egyptians don't want to relate with shepherds so he said when I bring you before Pharaoh this is what you're going to request for he made sure the meeting happened and of course they were given the land of Goshen to stay as a family and the Bible makes note of it that they grew exceedingly they increased greatly in the land and the time came that um their father was to pass on he called joseph and asked that he should bring his two sons calling them his own that these are actually my own sons as well even though you had them not when i was with you and then he prayed that's where you have the encounter of jacob crossing his hands to bless the children of joseph uh, joseph tried to change it and he said leave me alone I know what is going on here and um after afterwards he blessed them he passed on meaning their father jacob and of course um after he died his brothers came to him knowing what the treachery and all the things they had done to their brother to seek peace and told him this is what our father said this was his dying wish that you be kind to us but he told them you know what you did to me you all meant it for evil but god meant it for good and that's why he sent me ahead of you into the land of Egypt for the saving of many lives. Um, the Bible t makes us to understand that thereafter also Joseph passed on. Joseph died at a good old age as well.